Welcome to another episode of 72 Connector. With us this week, we have Tom, Sir, and Adam. Hi. 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 Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. Okay, Hello. that's enough of that. Uh, how are you guys doing this week? <laughs> Busy as fuck. Yeah, it's better than uh, being bored. Yeah. Both? It was, it was a week. Busy and bored? Wow. How do you do that? That sounds it's, bad. It's like when you're busy with stuff that you don't really feel like doing, so then you're kind of bored, but then yeah, sometimes I, you're not doing those things. I'll tell you what I always feel like doing uh, is cooking spaghetti in an Instant Pot. I, I, I in don't... Instant Pot. Dude, Instant Pot? Like... I know we usually don't like to advertise on this show, and they're not actually paying us any money, but they should, because holy shit, the Instant Pot is the best cooking device ever to have in a kitchen. Well, My parents just I, got one of those for Christmas, but they haven't used it yet. Oh, it's so I, I get the good. point of it for pressure cooking and stuff, but I don't understand for spaghetti, because that's something that only takes like normally five minutes to make dude, anyway. Dude, no, yeah. you have no idea. It takes you cook more than it, five minutes to make you spaghetti. You cook it really. in the sauce, so the noodles get like the, the good saucy taste like right in there, and this is so fucking simple. Like, I just threw it in, into Twitch chat, the recipe that I used. Oh mm. my god, it's it's fucking amazing. You gotta try it. You gotta get an Instant Pot nice. so fast, and I get like four meals out of this. So hmm. good. So good. I just made some did I go, today. Did I go on my carbonara rant yet? No. No, not yet. No. You should. Oh, okay. Do it. That's Do it. Because I was out on the podcast. No, I made uh, carbonara uh, as seen on Binging with Babish. As seen um, on Master of None. <laughs> yes, as seen on Master of None, as seen on Italy the past probably oh, 200 years. seen on Italy. Not in Italy, but just literally <laughs> just you go to Italy. It's on it top is there. of Italy. Just yeah. right on top. The Tower of Pisa no, is it's, actually it's, leaning uh, because there's carbonara up top off center. Yeah. But it's so, it's so easy. It was. It's one of the, the best tasting, easiest things I've ever made. And uh, I didn't have like super OG carbonara ingredients, uh, one of which is called guanciale which I am probably saying wrong, but it's pork jowl meat, and it's cured. Pork and so you just use bacon say, instead? The local, the local supermarket did not have cured pork jowl meat. Um, what kind of supermarket are you going to, man? Have, they didn't even have pancetta. So I used bacon, which was fine. It was still awesome. Uh, you just dice that stuff up, fry it in a pan. When it's about cooked through, you add a bunch of really finely chopped garlic. Fry that up for about one minute, kill the heat, add your pasta to the sauce or to the bacon stuff. Coat that in grease real nice. Everything's mm. looking good. It's smelling good. Then you beat two eggs, uh, throw that in the fray. Since the heat is off, the eggs will temper, but they will not cook and harden. So you have like a sort of sauce. It's Ooh. kind of runny at that point. You coat everything up. Then you dump in a full cup of Parmesan cheese, which is oh, one of my yeah. Fuck yeah. favorite things in the world. Now, and, now are you uh, talking like that, actual finely shredded real Parmesan or do you get that like dusty craft stuff? You are not allowed to buy a can of grated Parmesan cheese. That's stupid. Okay. Like at minimum, and, get the actual legit shreds get, out of a bag at minimum. Okay. <sighs> No. I don't. I don't really. Well, I bought like a block of it and then just like grated it. But yeah, um, I didn't get like the actually imported from Italy Parmigiano Reggiano, which is what people will tell you to do. But that's expensive, and you know, this was my first time. Eating it. I wasn't going to waste something like that in case it didn't turn out. Honestly, but, in anyways, the nicer cheese sections, they have the totes of that shredded already that they seal. See, that's what I usually go oh, with. Yeah. That's what I went with last night. Those work mm. really well. I use that for the risotto. Yeah. I'll try the next time. I usually put a whole cup of that in there, and uh, it kind of thickens everything when it melts, uh, and you have this wonderful garlicky, bacony, cheesy pasta, and it is incredible. When he said this and stopped, I was waiting for him to pull a fork up of it <laughs> right in front of us. I was just <laughs> like, "You dick!" Oh, I wish. It's so I good. Wish. So, so why? And I, I realize this is totally like inside baseball talk. We're getting to on the show, but why haven't we done a food show yet? 
I've we need to do a cooking I, cast. I pitched I pitched an idea for a food show. We just haven't done it yet. We we need to get on that because I I think that while people like are okay with us talking about video games, they really come here for the food talk. Yeah. Actually, do you know what? I'll pitch this here live so yeah. that we can get some feedback. Maybe. Fuck it. One thing so, I like about um one of my radio shows is they do show notes and show discussions live on the fucking yeah. show. Hey, yeah, transparency. Yeah, perfect. Uh, no, this is a total ripoff of that show Hot Ones on YouTube. But if we were to buy some really, really crazy hot sauces, like way too hot for us to handle. Oh, shit. And we would like and they would get progressively hotter on chicken wings. So we'd start with like an easy sauce like Tabasco or Sriracha or something like that. And like after each wing, we would have to play through a level of a game or something. And so by the time we get to the really hot stuff, we're struggling to keep it together. But then we also have to play a game of some sort. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, my God. We can do the Dark Souls chicken wing challenge. <laughs> we play a really hard game and eat some really hot wings and then try not to die. Like in real life and in the game. So I was thinking <laughs> if you can do it something like quick and should be easy, but then gets ratcheted up in difficulty because your mouth feels like fire. Like Mario running yeah, one Mario one, one with your one. with your mouth on fire, and then you know <laughs> if you get past that, you go to the hotter wing and you go to one two. Oh shit! Yeah. Bum, bum, bum. And then you hit the warp zone, and then we just put like a full pepper in front of you and make you take a bite out of it when you're going through eight four. Mm. But the only mm. thing that um, gets me is how would you play the game without making the controller a mess unless you did boneless? Yeah, that's you would have wondering. to there's, do boneless. Yeah, there's some yeah. Uh, uh, boneless though. Boneless wings suck. But you're not doing it for the meat. You're doing it for the show of holy shit, this is hot. No, I'm just doing it for the wings. Well, then get the fuck out of here. We don't need to stream that. You're just doing it for the wings. <laughs> all right. I, all right. I'd I'm watch gonna, a, a wings. I'm just going to leave right now then and go eat some wings. <laughs> See you guys. <laughs> probably probably better than the show. <laughs> but no, um, have you guys ever had conveyor belt sh sushi? No, conveyor I haven't. belt sushi. I no. want it, but I've never had it. Yeah, I've so had, I've had tuna and salmon. Uh, I've had California rolls. I'm sorry, you're not a big sushi guy. I'm not a no, big I sushi, sushi guy. I hate I sushi. Oh, I, I found I found uh, two things that I like, and they don't even count as sushi. I like avocado rolls. I don't like California rolls. Uh, and I like vegetable tempura rolls. And that's it. Wow. Yeah. Um, like, I, I like if you take sushi and you boil it down to, like, the most American thing, like, you could give this sushi to people at, like, a football game. That's the kind of sushi I like. The only time my dad will eat is teriyaki chicken because he doesn't eat anything raw. Yeah. But mm -hmm. um, they, there's a conveyor belt sushi here. And what they just have the chefs there, they make the shit. They just make whatever the hell they think they need to make and they put it on the belt. You can still order something if they don't have it on the belt, but they just put it on the belt. So for Gina, she's really picky. So she gets what she wants. She orders. Me, I like fish. I like sushi. I just start grabbing random ass plates off the belt. <laughs> It's like as long as it has spicy sauce and or and or eel sauce, I'm grabbing it. And you like eel sauce? Nice. I love that shit. It's so good. delicious. It's delicious. I had a uh, katsu sauce. We got um, like a little thing of katsu chicken in a bento, and it came with katsu sauce, which is like this weird, almost like if you can imagine uh, in a super Asian almost ketchup. Uh, it's mm. so good. It's got the sweet. It's got a little bit of spice to it. Uh, it is fantastic. I need to go buy a bottle of this stuff. Really good. It can amp mm. up any dish. That's like me with sesame seed oil. Put that on everything. Mm, I probably oil. shouldn't, but I do. So I wouldn't put I'd it on everything. I'd put I'd, it on everything. I put it on a lot. I, I really like it. Like I'll fry some noodles up and put some there. So, anyway, I think maybe a little bit of game talk, huh? huh? No. Some games? Some games. No, game I'm talk? still talking about food. But there's no yeah. more food. There's but I haven't told food. you about my restaurant I'm opening. Yeah. Me and my coworker were going to open a Vietnamese pho place, but instead of doing regular sliced meat, we would do it barbecue style, like actually smoke the meats. Oh, my God. And the place is called Pho Q. <laughs> I would totally uh. go to that. I would go to folk you. I I like that. That that that's a really good name. 
uh, it's kind of like the whole folking and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so anyways, but, so I was playing some Rocket League this week. Oh, <laughs> anything interesting or just no, properly? absolutely not. I was just playing some Rocket League this week. I was playing some Rocket League this week. Uh, I, yeah. And last week, uh, I think I told you guys, getting I got, addicted. yeah, I got to um, Bird and I were playing doubles uh, and I got to Diamond. No, 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 not Diamond. Uh, was it Platinum? Plat 2, I think. Mm. Yeah, I think that's what it was anyway. Yeah, I, I'll need to I'll need to look up myself. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Plat 3. Plat 3 is where I got in doubles. So, yeah, Bird was was carrying hard that day. I was going to say, I'm like, no offense, Tom. <laughs> How? Okay, I got to say, though, so we were doing placement matches. He was on his alt, and I was on my main account. Um, I got plat three. He got gold two or something. So I actually ranked up higher than he did in the placement rounds. I'm not wow. sure how that happened. I, I wonder no if idea. your unranked MMR has some kind of um, effect Maybe? or other MMRs. I, don't, I, don't I, have, so. I have no idea. You but guys both started from scratch? Yeah, we had zero placement matches each. Hmm. And we went through all 10, didn't lose a game. He got gold and I got plat. Did you guys see the uh, rewards for this season? No. Yeah. It's uh, wheels again, but this time um, your logo will stay in the center. Like if what you get, if it's a diamond, you get the diamond, the champ, you get the champ. And as the wheels move, that won't move. That stays mm -hmm. stationary in the center, which is kind of cool. I think these wheels look way better than the last time we got wheels for a season reward. Yes. Yes, I was Those actually wheels just were about to say awful that. looking and these are less bad looking. I I typically don't Kinda fuck like around them. with wheels. Kinda. I won't wear them, but I think they look good. I think they look really good. So, yeah. 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 I was yeah. hoping someone else would pick up no. there instead of just no, let we go didn't. silent. We didn't. No Absolutely one did. Not. No. no. Thanks guys. No awesome. problem. Never. So I'll I make this never. even more awkward and then just say, hey, Adam, how's Hellblade? Oh, that sucked. It's terrible. Oh, okay. <laughs> cool. you, finished, no, uh, you finished it. Yeah, you? I finally finished Hellblade. Um, that is one of the best games I've played in a really long time, actually. Uh, really? If I would have beat this before the new year, that would have been my game of the year. No, like, not even close. Yeah, heck, Blade. <laughs> So um, you're saying that would be your top? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's just one of those games that's... I've I've not seen very many games with this level of like perfectly executed presentation and like accuracy to the, the vision they were going for. I mean, it was just so polished and everything about the game uh, worked within what they were trying to do with it as far as the the mental health stuff um so here's my question with yeah if you didn't know what they were going for would you have known what they were doing because um, it's one thing to identify what they're doing in the game when you've already known yeah. on the outside what they're trying to do i mean it's pretty i mean you know she's nuts. i mean there's so much of it in the game I mean, it's pretty obvious. Even if, I mean, you might not know about them like consulting with mental health ex experts and uh, people that have problems, but I mean, the whole game revolves around your character's struggle with this darkness. And you're hearing the voices throughout the entire game. Uh, that's very obvious that that's basically schizophrenia, but... Um, I mean, maybe you wouldn't know the extent of which everything that you're experiencing in the game is part of that. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of subtleties that I missed because I'm pretty good at that. And because I haven't played through it twice, you know, I'm sure that a second playthrough, ob obviously, I'll probably catch a lot more of that kind of thing. But is this kind of game something that would actually warrant a second playthrough? Um, I mean, I don't see getting no. a lot out of doing a second run. Yeah, that's I mean, what I was you might catch too. some stuff you missed, um, but yeah, I would say not really necessary. No, on a game like that, I would rather go to the Googles and just start looking stuff up and saying, "Hey, what did people notice?" Mm. The Googles. I'll I go to that. the Googles. Yeah, I do that with like basically every game I end up beating. <laughs> yeah, I did uh, that with no, Inside. 
it's it's just it's so good and i watched a video recently um i don't remember the name of the guy it starts with an r he's got a really good youtube channel um but he did a video on why this was the most important game of 2017 um and it was it had a lot to do with the fact that this game is not a triple a game and it's not an indie game it's that middle middle of the road uh like middle tier developer thing and how there aren't a lot of those like right now and it's it's it seems like it's that perfect balance of you can get away doing stuff that indie games do that don't have to appeal to the mass market it's not watered down you can get as creative as you want uh you can do things kind of outside the box but then you have like this pretty solid budget to where you can make this game present itself kind of like a triple a title with the really high fidelity graphics um all of the technology they use to do like the face capture and everything like all the facial animations and everything in that game was done in real time oh wow i did not know yeah. that yeah the the actress wore like this head thing with like cameras on her face and stuff hmm. uh, they did a whole tech presentation on that so um, did they use the voice actress for that or did they get a specialized actress who can do more facial stuff so what they did was their video editor was a stand-in for like their technical presentations because they didn't have an actress picked out for the role yet but they still needed to show off this tech at conventions and you know work on the tech and all that kind of stuff and after a while they just kind of stuck with her so mm -hmm. the, the person that did all of the acting and played the main role in the main character was actually just their video editor with no acting experience. And it surprisingly turned out really well. That's really cool. <laughs> and it's also really cool that they actually let her do that. Mm -hmm. Opposed to saying, nope. But yeah, that yeah, I would like to see more of these middle. I don't know what what term do you call that? Did they double have a, double A games? Yeah, <laughs> double did A they, developers. Did they have a major publisher over the top though? No. So I uh, know where'd they get the funding? They were the funding. I don't remember. Why well, I mean, was, uh, you don't just pop up out of nowhere and have the kind of money to make this uh, game. The developer is, is Ninja Theory. They are not yeah. out of nowhere. Okay. Yeah, um, that's what I was trying to get. Did, I was like, where did the money come from? Right. So, they did okay. uh, Devil May Cry and um, oh, okay. what's the other Enslaved or something? Um, I'm pulling up their gameography right now. Oh, Do Kung Devil Fu. May Cry is enough. Yeah, that that was Cry. a really big yeah. title. Um, yeah, the, the remake, the 2013 game. Disney Infinity, they worked on that. Uh, definitive edition of Devil May Cry. Uh, more Disney Infinity stuff. Oh, that's probably where they got the money. When Heavenly Sword. When Disney... Uh, Remember Heavenly Sword for PS3? That was like one of their uh, top tier titles. It was because it was actually one of the few that did the six axis. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was really weird watching people do that because there was a big long shot thing where you had to like take this uh, ballista bolt or something like that and navigate it with your controller like it was a joystick. It was really weird. Yeah. Hellblade was uh, developed and published by Ninja Theory. So uh, they mm -hmm. didn't have any kind of um, intermediary between them. They probably got a lot of money from the Xfinity when they shut that down because they were probably contractually like, hey, we get this money. Yeah, possibly. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so... I can see that. But yeah, Hellblade is, is very much, I think, a must-play. And there's one more thing I kind of wanted to bring up about it is... I've talked about how good the sound design is and yes. and this isn't just the voices that you hear which are you know really cool they actually used a, a microphone that was designed to pick up sound like the human ears do like the physical mic oh. actually looks like a set of ears and they Weird. had the actresses that did those voices all like surrounding the mic and moving around and whispering in the ear mic thing and then some of them were further away and stuff uh, they did a whole lot of dev diary videos. So if you're interested in the making of Hellblade, all that stuff's on there. It's pretty cool. Hmm. But it did something that I haven't seen a lot of games do. And there was a part towards the end where you're fighting something. Uh, I'm not going to spoil it. But there's a moment where you can't see the thing. You're in like this dark area. 
and you're fighting this boss and you can't see him. He kind of like it's one of the stages of his attacks. But you can kind of hear where he is around you. Like you can tell if he's kind of behind you or to the side and then he'll eventually dash out of the darkness at you. And you have to use those audio cues to know which way he's coming from so that you know which way to dodge and so and so forth. So if you're playing on a mono system, you're fucked. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm sure you could just dodge around a lot and not get hit. Because that's that awesome. Would, that part would be really hard for people that like are deaf, for instance. I, I was just gonna, I was just gonna point out the irony. This game to illustrate yeah. the disability or the uh, mental disability of schizophrenia in that, but in its game design is completely fucking over people with hearing disabilities. Yeah. 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 It would be. It would be an extremely that's inaccessible type of game. Super um, ironic. Yeah. Well, that's for the sequel, Ear Blade, where you play as a deaf character, and there's actually <laughs> yeah. no sound in the entire game. Everything is felt through the vibrations of your controller. Uh, I would play the shit out of that. Yeah. Get that it on the Switch awesome. with that HD rumble. I, don't, yeah. I still don't know how I feel about HD rumble. It seems like a fucking buzzword to me. Well, okay, I thought so until the Labo stuff, where they can actually control left, right, front, back, and actually do that with just rumble. I thought yeah. that was kind of impressive. And it's not just, hey, let's rumble and see which way it goes. It's actual. You have 100% control. You go forward. You go back. You 360. You just kind of gradually. With with the controller moving through rumble alone. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Just, which just is, so people Yeah. Understand. With the Labo, it's a, it's a cardboard cutout stuff we talked about. They had this ant that you sit both Joy-Cons left and right on the top of it. And you can remote control this cardboard ant through just the vibration of the controllers. I, I just, I've never felt the need to feel uh, actual cow udder uh, when using a, a gaming <laughs> device. Um, Why and, not? And I, I guess I've just never imagined a cow milking game. Uh, but then again, I'm loving Stardew Valley, so there's that. Yeah, you're it's, missing out. Yeah. But I will say I do want to get one to switch just to do the ball rolling game because I want to see that. People say you can actually feel how many marbles are rolling around in this box by the way the controller vibrates. Yeah, I, I want to play one to switch, but I am morally opposed to paying money for it. I will go to GameStop here in a few months and see if I can get it for like 20. I think I would drop 20 on it. I wouldn't drop 20. I might drop 10. I, I think I you're could. You're going to go to GameStop? Like you're going to walk in the door and everything? I just did last night, actually. What? Oh, oh, shit. So um, last night, I, I can't show you. Um, actually, I'll, I'll give the full story. So um, coming back from dinner, um, I already know I'm going to go to a GameStop. Um, I Was called, there an internet outage? No. I like physical media, especially on this stuff, because once I'm Ew. done, you know what? I get, okay, granted, I paid full price. I get 20 bucks back when I'm done. You get 20 you know, Zimbabwean dollars or whatever. Basically, yeah. <laughs> you get the you get the amount of like sixty seven American cents back the when point, you return to GameStop. But regardless, well, we'll we'll hit on that later. It's better than getting nothing. Um, so I call them like, hey, do you guys have any copies of Monster Hunter World? And they're like, we have one. I'm like, fuck, on the way. So I get there, and there is a guy buying Monster Hunter at the cash register. I'm like, oh my god. <clears throat> He got the PlayStation 1. So there was still one copy left. So picked it up, installed it last night, started playing it today. It's pretty good. Um, it is very slow to start because they do a lot more teaching you in this than they ever have in any Monster Hunter game I've played. They really walk you through the systems. They show you, here's where you go to do this kind of stuff. Go talk to him now so you see what he offers. They do that kind of thing, and they're very explicit on you go here with this, can get this kind of upgrade. Where all in the past ones, it was like, fuck it, man. Here's camp. Go do some missions. You know what to do. Yeah, I, I don't know. So I watched the first 50 minutes of your stream, uh, which ended up being like a four and a half hour stream. Yeah. Um, and the thing I got from Monster Hunter World is it is extremely unpolished. Uh, so while the they do have English voice actors, the lip the lip syncing is clearly for the Japanese audio. Yes, absolutely. Clearly. Um, the uh, subtitles will uh, very often 
mismatch what the players are saying. Either the uh, the the NPCs are giving you more information on it, uh, you know, through their exposition and actual talking than what the subtitles say, or the subtitles are giving you way more information than what the player or what the NPC actually says. Well, that is actually common in games where um people go hmm no oh, you don't say and they give you those little quick libs. That's what's happening. Is oh, no, there, there canned was, responses? It was it was totally totally different. Um, so there was a guy trying to lead you back to camp and he would say oh hurry follow me and then the text dump would say uh follow me north to the camp and one one offers a vastly different um experience in vastly different information than the other they both get across the same blunt point but i feel like uh, at least for the first 50 minutes of the game this is something i will play in eight months uh when i get the actual finished pc copy um, I wouldn't put money. It's better on PC. What you're complaining about, it wasn't the, I can go back to the stream and show you. It's not the actual subtitle. It's this thing on the side where it has the guy's face and says what he's saying. Yeah. Which by the that, way is also, that, that's not subtitles though. That is like a page kind of system. They are not the subtitles. The subtitles on the bottom, it's either they're perfect or it does the quick, like, blah, blah, blah. And the guy said nothing of that in this text, mm. but it's just a quick like, oh, hey, man. And it's actually, well, hello, adventure, blah, blah, blah. That's, I, I don't, it, it's sloppy. It looks sloppy. The entire start of the game was uh, very janky and jarring. The character customization looked great. It looked fantastic. It looked like you could spend fucking years perfecting your character down to like the amount of nose hairs they have. Uh, really <laughs> cool stuff. But... I, I don't know. I just it I can't imagine that the rest of the game will be uh you know more polished than the intro was. Usually you you front load the first hour of your game to grab people, uh to make them interested in your world. And the thing I got was wow, Monster Hunter World is going to be jank as fuck. It's not <laughs> janky at all. There is nothing janky about that. You don't like it, it's not janky. That on the side is not subtitles. You the, can't read that on the side and except the, when there's legitimate subtitles at the bottom. The, the thing the on the right they, is not subs. They didn't even match up their, their lip syncing to localization tells me that they rushed this game through. There's a lot of games I play where that doesn't match. Maybe they just don't care about but it was it was the Sonic US Adventure release. style bad. And they, they might not. That's that's a good point. They might not care about the U.S. release, right? Like make but sure if, the game works, uh just kind of translate things good enough and Oh, that's so, okay. so lazy. And I, I don't, you know, until those things are fixed, and they probably won't be, you know, I'm just not interested in playing it. And also, that game's not about that stuff. That's not what Monster Hunter is. If you're going there for that with Monster Hunter, get out. It's not for you. Yeah, I, I want like a, a good, complete, polished experience. Not well, once again, that, that is not the game. That's like complaining about a chess game because the menu sucks. <laughs> Bivens brings up a point. The thing is, Monster Hunter dialogue means literally nothing. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. That is nothing about Monster Hunter. I, I get it's a game about you you grind to kill things so you can get more stuff to grind so you can kill more things so you can get more stuff to grind so you can kill more things. Yeah, like I, every action RPG ever. No, not yeah. not at all. Not even no, no. All action I'm, RPGs I, boil well, down to because get Mass, more stuff. No, no, Mass Effect absolutely was totally a grind game where you didn't care at all about the story or characters. <laughs> I am going to stop I'm, you right there. That was okay, really I'm sorry, bad. I'm thinking hack and slash. Sorry, but yes, either yes, way, you can throw Destiny Two, Destiny, Warframe, and Monster Hunter all in the same bucket of it's a game where you grind, and that's literally the game. It's about the combat, the combos, the raids, we, we getting need, everyone we together to kill elders. We we can't call these action RPGs. We need to call these grind RPGs because that's what they are. An RPG just means like the, you control your character. You level them up. You build the character the way you want. Yeah. 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 That's been watered down to that for like the last decade and a half. Grind RPG. I think the point being that Monster Hunter isn't a story focused game. At all. Yeah. So no, that's, that's parts fine. of the story that aren't really that important and they're going to be kind of not as good as and a game that would focus on that. So the stuff I did want to get into, um, this game has, like I was hinting at, watered it down. I don't want to say watered it down. Made it very easy for people who aren't familiar to get into it. Like the <laughs> systems are explained much more than what they are in others. 
One thing I don't like in the maps, you so you always load into a map and there's like seven or eight zones in it. Um, and whenever there's a great beast in there, you're trying to hunt him down. Typically, what you would have to do if you found him, you would fight him, fight him, fight him. You would wound him, something would fall off, and he would run. And you would have to follow him. Well, mm-hmm. once he leaves that zone, you lost trace of him. Unless you had a tracer round on him, you have to just find him again. On this, they have this little pixie dust thing that outlines, hey, here's where he went. Follow him here. As long as you have tracking up enough for it, it just outlines here. Follow him. Which is really, really weird to me because it's just super easy. It's like easy mode turned on the whole time. Mm. That said, the fights are still intense and crazy. Um, the beta. The, end, the top level boss in the beta. Uh, I watched a group of three try him two different times. 45 minutes each and couldn't beat him. Within my Damn. third mission, randomly stumbled upon this son of a bitch when I was fighting something else. Couldn't run away fast enough. Fucker uh, one hit me and the guy I was playing with. <laughs> I was like, God damn it. But that's the so thing. It's I, pretty ruthless. It's ruthless and it's it's very natural. Like it's an ecosystem. Everything is in this game. Like it'll migrate through zones. If you get two carnivores together, they will fight. So I actually, one of my quests I finished by running one into a bigger guy and the bigger guy just killed it for me. And then I had to hide like a little punk from the bigger guy because the bigger guy would have wrecked my All right, shit. Can we, can we talk about that hiding? Because I also saw that part where... Oh, Urk, that, that part was terrible. That Okay, Urk was getting chased by a pack of Jurassic Park rappers, uh, raptors. Or rappers. Jurassic, Park, Jurassic, rappers, Jurassic Park, rappers. Park rappers. That sounds yeah. way better. Uh, it does. Um, which, by the way, by the way, when you were watching that, I was like, come on, Urk. Come on, Urk. You've got this. It's the perfect moment. And you didn't say clever girl even once during that part. And I'm just, I'm so <laughs> disappointed in you. They're four-legged. They're When's not, the last I'm, time you even watched Jurassic Park, Eric? Yeah, come on, man. Get it together. But anyway, so these dinosaurs are like staring him down. Like, like he is in the game. He, I am the raptor and Urk is Urk. And we are this distance apart. And the game's like, oh, press A to hide in the bushes. And Urk's character just hunches down in some tall weeds. And the raptor's still looking at him like, I guess he's hiding now. Okay, I'm going to go away. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Yeah, it, that was that fuck? was hilarious. It made me think of uh, like Metal Gear when you get in the cardboard oh box. God. Just like, <laughs> oh, it's just a box. Well, I'm not going to bother with this. I'm going away. I just walked down this hallway and it was empty. Ah, fuck. I have taquitos to eat. <laughs> but um, I will say the game feels really good, plays really well. Um, the multiplayer. Um, so my previous experiences have been Generation on the DS and Try on the Wii. Um, but didn't really do a lot of multiplayer in either of them. On this one, it's super easy. Um, you can set your well, game. Well, because you, you have a system that actually does online. Yeah, it does it great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you just open up. When you start the game, say, yeah, I'm going to play online. And you just set it to private. And then literally, you invite someone in. When you're in your hub world, they're not there. As soon as you start a mission, it sends them a notification. And they can just hit, okay, I'm going to join. And you get to this little waiting screen. It's like, okay, both players are ready. You ready to start the mission? The whole time between, you're hmm. just kind of running around doing whatever you want. I was like, ah, it's a really it's nice. It's a really so nice it's, system. it's instance. It's not like uh, an MMO. It's actually inviting people in or yeah, randoms. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, now, can you can you queue for a mission with other random people? Um, there is matchmaking system. I haven't tried it. Okay. Um, until I reach end game stuff, I don't yeah. really want to fuck with that. Uh, they do have a system called SOS I want to try out, where whenever you get to a boss, you can send up an SOS flare, and members of the hunting party might come and find you and help. And I hmm. think what that is is kind of like a bloodstain revival kind of thing or summoning someone in Dark Souls or something like that, Okay, where it sends a signal out and people can choose to come into your game and fight with you. So it's, it's interesting. Hmm. I hmm. want to explore some more. Um, I'll probably be streaming some more of this tomorrow morning, to be honest. So... If you're interested, just jump on, check it out. I'm trying to talk a couple people, Souls and Dobby, into picking it up on the Xbox. So, yeah, it's a good time. Um, a lot better time than some of the other shit I was trying out this week. My God. <laughs> um, so there's this game. Uh, what the fuck was it called? Um, Guild Quest. 
That sounds really that sounds fucking generic. Really and, gen- yeah. <laughs> it was Guild awful. Guild Quest. It is the worst. Yes. I don't want to say worst. It was a really bad idol game. It was like, fuck this. You are all about these idol games. I, I was just yeah, checking what's, it what's out. What's the idol thing? How it's, many hours do you have in... Uh, What's the what's the one you've been uh, playing? Forgotten Realm Idol or Thousands the of the Idol. Thousands. The one you've been running on your system, not the one that you've been playing. Yeah, the one the one that's running right now. I mean, yeah. I'm yeah, clearly, it's, it's I'm clearly playing it right now over there. So, um, I love that. It's it's fun. It's actually more involved than a standard idol because there's formations and strategy to it. But I've mm. yeah. Um, but another game that's also you know Tom would hate because of its lack of polish. Um, Humans Fall Flat. Um, just about finished it. Oh, almost yeah. done with it. Well, I mean, like, oh, almost all done the, already. All the game. missions. The missions. That said, that's okay. a fun game just to go in and fuck around because of the. Physics uh, do you, do you guys gifted me that game? I haven't had a chance to check it out yet. We should play that sometime. You should install it. It's it's a good time. We could play it together. It's maybe installed and ready to go, dog. Maybe at some point we get that as a postcast, kind of like you know tonight. Everyone, we're oh, doing yeah. don't starve together. Yeah. Because what we told you at the end of the cast last week was wrong because Russian hackers stuffed our ballots. So Damn um, Russian mafia. That said, uh, in a little bit, we'll conclude the current poll. Everyone can go on the Discord, find it, and vote. But yeah, right so, now, it looks like GTA. But Yeah, un- unless unless Dota 2 Turbo gets a ton of votes, and by a ton, I mean Don't do five, um, GTA 5 no. will be next week's postcast game. So get in and vote. Well, and you guys have been playing a lot of GTA Five recently. Yes, yes, we have. Pardon me, you asked me at the worst possible time. Sorry, uh, Tom is currently <laughs> dying, so I will continue to talk mindlessly <laughs> until he's um, done with that. Oh my god! All right. Uh, so yes, Can we have it? been playing a shit ton of GTA Five, uh, and it's usually uh, when I'm I'm bored, like I've eaten dinner, I watch an episode of West Wing or Four because it's great. Um, I sit at my computer and I'll be like, "Oh, what's everybody playing? Holy shit! There's six people from from the the 72 pin connector Discord just like chilling in GTA Five, and I'll log in and we're all trying to kill RS Gamer at the same time, and it's fucking great. It's amazing because he'll just sit somewhere and snipe all of us, and then we'll use rocket launchers and he'll still kill us because he's got a sniper rifle. Uh, and then we'll go do some missions where we'll do some some gun running, or we'll we'll pick one guy on the server and just fucking wreck him because he was over there um and we'll do it over and over again until he leaves uh we actually got the entire server cleared out of people and had only 72 pin connector slash cozy crew people uh in the uh in the server it was so much fun um we'll we'll do heists we'll go buy apartments new cars show off our our cool new uh our cool new duds and our fashions. I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but I believe Bivens has a shirt that says smell like a bitch, um, <laughs> which is just fucking great. That's great. <laughs> That's an awesome name. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it's, oh my God, it's so much fun. Um, in the postcast game, we've, we've always stuck to uh, races and stuff. I think we might try some other game modes next time. Uh, I need to talk it talk it over with uh, Josh and, and the boys, uh, but there's there's just so much to do. We were going to go arm wrestling last night, but then we got distracted by having uh, mosh fights uh, outside of Josh's apartment, which was cool. <laughs> <laughs> It's like you, you drove down to San Francisco and just started moshing. Yeah, well, like like our characters would just be punching, so we'd just be outside in a circle punching around each other and having a giant <laughs> mosh fight. Oh, and then uh, Bubbles pulled out an axe, uh, and then we just started oh. having an axe mosh fight, uh, which ended in in tragedy, as you can imagine. Never bring an axe to a mosh fight. Yeah, it was it was kind of kind of fucked up. So it was a good time. Uh, I I'm loving GTA Five more and more. That said. Um, People like to complain about hackers in Counter-Strike and in PUBG and in Overwatch, but you don't know hackers until you've played Grand Theft Auto V online. Literally, I, I, I can count. Uh, it's been less than five times where I've gotten into a server where there hasn't been somebody hacking, somebody that was invincible, or somebody that was you know literally exploding you from completely across the map. Um, it absolutely ruins the game. Um well, that's shit. That's why um, oh, PUBG's God. implementing their new shit. Yeah, they are. So we'll we'll have to see how that turns out. I haven't had any issues with hackers in PUBG because uh, it's probably because I suck. 
I've seen some, um, like uh, Dark Soul, I think. He's had a speed hacker in a match of his I've seen before. Okay, okay. So they've already banned like 100,000, and now in this re most recent build, they threw in a new anti-hack system that on the test servers was some crash into people's machines. So, oh, yeah, shit. let's go live with it. Oh, yeah. So far, I haven't heard anyone complaining about it. Um, I was actually going to boot that up last night, didn't get to it. So I might end up trying the next couple nights, getting into there, see what's up. Yeah, let me know. I'll, I'll play. Um, but yeah, GTA Five. The the only reason that the hackers are such an issue uh, is not because they they ruined this super competitive esport of a game because it's it's just not. Uh, it's that the load times are so fucking long. I I I kid you not. It takes me four minutes uh, to get from I clicked start on Steam to getting into a match in GTA Five. If I change sessions, it's probably a minute and a half, two mi two minutes to get into a new server. It takes for fucking ever. Uh, and trying to find a uh, a server or an instance without somebody hacking is almost impossible. Can't do they let you set up private servers? Not that I'm aware of. That sucks. Yeah, it's it's annoying. Um, but yeah, it's it's fun. Um, I didn't buy GTA Five for the online. I know it's still topping the uh, Steam charts because people do. Uh, but you know, get it, check it out. It's a good time. Hmm. Don't hack it. <laughs> no hacking. I, I uh, I've been doing some hacking actually. Oh, I started playing this game called Observer, and this comes from the developer of Layers of Fear, which um, I streamed a little while back. Um, this game is a lot different than that, and also pretty similar to that in its own way. Um, you play as a member of the Polish police of the cyberpunk dystopian future. <laughs> huh. And that part of that great. is, yeah. And part of that is you're like augmented with machines and stuff and you can hack into people's minds to uh, interrogate people and figure out what happened at the crime scenes and stuff. So it's kind of this, um, it's kind of this, explore the explore the crime scene area uh you can like scan for electronic devices or you can scan for biological stuff you get information like oh there's a dead body on the ground let's scan it and it shows like oh it's the blood type this and whatever this and oh he's got a chip in his brain but it's got malware on it and stuff like that <laughs> people running around with malware in their heads right oh, so but it's, it's just a horror focused game it's it's very very creepy um and what I'm noticing when playing this is it's got that layers of fear. Uh, everything is going crazy all at once kind of thing. Like it doesn't. There are parts that don't really flow. It jerks around a lot. Like, oh, OK, you're hacking into this guy's mind. But of course, this guy is not a very good person. And the whole system is kind of janky. It's. Uh, there's like drugs involved and stuff. So you're going through this guy's mind and like, Oh, the floor drops out from under you. And then you turn around and you're in a different room. And then you go through the door and the screen goes to static. And then you see somebody floating and then like walls are glitching out and all kinds of stuff. But I went through this sequence in this guy's mind and it was probably 10 minutes long and it was that stuff constantly. And while it sort of makes sense within the game's story, uh, I think a big part of the game is just you're on this roller coaster of what the fuck is going on. This is really creepy, which mm. is very much in the same vein of Layers of Fear. But uh, with the, the cyberpunk kind of aesthetic and the dark, gritty atmosphere and the, you know, shitty hotel with the neon signs and stuff, uh, those are my favorite. It's kind of cool. Yeah, it's like it's really cool in its presentation. You um, really you like kinda, your horror games. I do. Yeah. But uh the 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 entire visual and sound design of what they're trying to do with the horror sequences and like all the glitchiness and the the cyberpunk stuff. It's really cool. Horror games. You like horror games? Horror games. Like Carl. I love horrors. Uh <laughs> But um, I'm excited to play it some more. It seems to be a lot more story-focused than 
Layers of Fear. Um, Layers of Fear was the one with like the big ass Cthulhu polish? that came up, right? Yeah, <laughs> that was an Easter egg though. That wasn't part of the the real game. Ah, okay. <laughs> that Way was, to like, spoil it, Eric. I'm yeah. sorry. I Thanks. just saw it and I was like, that, that, "That's really big and weird." And had like that. That's your art, artist gone crazy, hallucinating in his own house. Game horror simulator, horror simulator, horror, horror simulator, horror. Ah. horror. That's a hard word to say. Horror, 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 horror. horror. Yeah, horror. but Observer seems to be much more polished. It seems to be a little bit bigger in scope and scale. Uh, seems a lot better. To me it's more interesting so um, um i'm only an hour and a half into it but i'm looking forward to playing some more of that how long of a game does it feel like it's going to be i i or feel still... like i'm just getting started ah okay well that's always good i think i didn't even hack into anybody's brain until the first hour hmm. just the idea of hacking into someone's brain it makes me yeah. think of um that black mirror episode with the eye recording oh god oh yeah did you did you finish the last season of that no still got to finish the last season of that <laughs> it's it's good it's not as good as the other three though if that makes any sense i'm not going to go into any spoilers uh it's worth watching but i didn't enjoy it as much as the other ones yeah. just putting it out there i gotta finish it I up st i still have to watch some more of this i've only seen like six episodes five or six episodes i think i'm actually only at the end of season two I can't okay. remember if I've seen season three or not. I really liked season three. I really liked them. Although one, two, and three kind of blend together for me. Because you bench them all together? Yeah. Yeah. I just said, oh, wait, Black Mirror. And I saw the first, the first fucking bombshell of an episode. It's like, holy <laughs> shit. Yep. I'm watching this all tonight. <laughs> yeah. Jesus I like how the, the later ones seem to evolve more into strictly like this is a technical war world in the fucked up horrors that could come from it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, hey, here's a horror, uh, horrific future. That's you know probably Hor three to horrific. Five. Yeah, horrific future. That's probably only <laughs> three to five years out. So buckle up, Buttercup. The one I still like. I want to know what's going on in the world. Is uh, the one when they're cycling. They give you the context a little oh, bit, yeah. but they don't let you know what's going on in the scheme of the world. Yeah, why these people are almost in this slave camp kind of thing. Yeah. I, I want to know the scope of what's happening there because I think that's really interesting. I kind of like that they didn't do that because it gives you just the wanting of it. Yeah, but I mean, like to me, those that's what I really like is like the what's going on in the grand part of the world. Yeah, the world building aspect yes, of it. Yes, I'm like, I want to know like why are these 12 people cycling for cyber currency that they're living off of so they can cycle more? Who are they generating power for? <laughs> They're they're just mining who are, Bitcoin. Who are they're they mining Bitcoin. The power? Oh yeah, it's it's the future of the Bitcoining rigs. Whenever the yeah, do you guys see that actually? What the prices for fucking graphics cards? Like yeah, yeah, the, I know because I'm looking I to upgrade and it's hurting me. You can't right now. I'll, I'll sell you mine at market value if you want. No, I I want to go from a 980 Ti to a 1080. I got a 1080. I'll sell you at a market value. Yeah, the market value is 1500 <laughs> right now. Oh shit! No, fuck that. No fucking yeah, way. I paid 800 for it when it came out. And they're selling for fifteen hundred right don't, now. I don't understand Whoa. why people are buying NVIDIA cards to mine with because AMD cards are vastly superior for mining purposes. Their value, NVIDIA are superior in every other way. Don't get me wrong. The AMD mining, ones are even more expensive. I know. Like the, uh, I think it's a five hundred dollar cards marked up over fifteen hundred right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. It's fucking nuts. Oof. Yeah, a, uh, NVIDIA came out and. They don't, I mean, I don't know how the fuck they can do this or anyone can do this, but they're telling um, big box stores and things like, hey, somehow find a way to get these cards to gamers. Yeah. But I mean, I don't know how you do that because the guys building crypto rigs know enough about gaming. They can fake their way through it. Yeah. Well, or I mean, shit, you don't know that of, a bunch of people, you know, mining cryptocurrencies are, you know, gamers that's themselves. Stereotyping. Yeah, that's one. Yeah. No, Adam. Okay. No one is building a fucking mining rig that can't BS their way <laughs> to make some store think they're a gamer. Yeah. What? I hate video games, but I want to mine a bunch of cryptocurrency. But you have the technical knowledge to make a cryptocurrency mining rack. Yeah, it, it does take yeah. uh, it's just uh, hardware. A little you don't bit need to know anything on that about games. Yes, there are two different circles on the Venn diagram, oh, I got but it. they I got overlay it. by such a huge right. amount. I know. This is what yeah. I'm going to do. Like, if I'm the manager of a big box store, what I'm going to do is say, all right, uh, the Metal Gear Solid series, rank them. 
<laughs> they all suck. Okay, I give you a graphics card. Uh, I give you a graphics card. Come or, on, Adam. Yeah, how, you, you get a bad graphics card though. Best, best to worst. Best to worst. Yeah. Uh. On the I'm spot. conflicted between either OG MGS or three, and then okay. I would go down to two, and then four, and those are the only ones I've played. Okay. Beat I it. think I, that would be exactly my list. I'd put three at the top, but yeah. And I'm actually with Dobby. I've never played a Metal Gear Solid game. Play MGS3. Hmm. Uh, it's fantastic. Get like the subsistence one. Don't get the original that's got the fucked up camera angles. Um, hmm. It's it's beautiful, glorious, stealth action camp. Uh, it's just enjoyable. MGS1 is a classic for a reason. Uh, MGS2 is really good, but really fucking meta. Okay, so, yeah, I, yeah. I realize that one would be hard it, to play at this especially point. Especially at the yeah. end, it gets really, really it's, weird. Like, <laughs> if you want to see navel-gazing the game, Metal Gear Solid 2 is the one. So, let's ignore nostalgia and l enjoyment <sighs> of the games at the time and love of the series. Is mm -hmm. there a single one that is actually worth, like, okay, this game on its own, outside of the series, is worth playing? Three. Three. Okay. Three. Okay. Three would be the one. Easily. I might I might check that out. Adam, the ladder. If the ladder makes the whole thing. What? The ladder in MGS three. Oh ladder. damn. See? You haven't played three twenty seven times. I have, no, I actually only played that once. Um That was on PS uh that was PS three or two? Yeah, two. Four was on three. Yeah. And then yeah, five was, was on three. four. Yeah. Yeah. For what it's worth, though, I think I would like the first one better if it wasn't so dated. I think um, I might like it better than 3. The best version I've played, and you can you can get your hands on this for real cheap, because GameCubes are fucking cheap. Uh, play Metal Gear Solid The Twin Snakes. It's a remake yeah. of 1 in 2's I've, engine. I've heard mixed things about that, though. I heard that they did something... They kind of ruined some of the cinematography with the cutscenes and stuff. I liked it. Um, or, I don't know. I don't. It that is completely bad. anecdotal from somebody. Yeah. <laughs> I I try. I mean, at this point, you're blowing what thirty bucks on a GameCube in a game. I'm getting yeah. a sixty four before I get a GameCube because it, when there, I moved out, I left mine in Ohio. Oh, uh, is GameCube uh, emulatable? It is. Yes. Like with reasonable yes performance yes it is. uh the emulator you're looking for is called Dolphin, and it is fucking wonderful. Mm. Yeah, it would. It would emulate no problem. Dolphin, not that I would ever do such a thing. Not, not ever. I mean, you're you're going legal, to buy but... the you're going to buy the disc and put the disc in your computer yes. to play. And actually, yes. Dolphin supports that. If you wanted to buy Twin Snakes and pop the disc in, oh yeah, you can do that. <laughs> really, Dolphin's oh, a cool. fucking rad emulator. That's really that's cool. really cool. Yeah, it's pretty fucking awesome. We have to worry about what we say out here, Tom. I just realized this. Yeah, we just woke up my dot. Oh shit! Yeah, we did. So, um. Computer, order dildos. Luckily, didn't you're in work. the headphones. Yeah, yeah, it didn't work. <laughs> um, and damn it, you know my wake word. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah. Psychomantis. Actually, um, you weren't on the cast last week, Adam. I was wanting to talk no, about this, but I put the ace in the hole. Um, I played through Cosmonaut. Um, ah. Actually, you could still find the VOD on the Twitch. Um, I played through it with Adam in there because... Adam, as we've discussed, has been very involved in that game. Um, did all of the mm -hmm. audio engineering for it. And Josh was involved, if I remember correctly, yes. too. Josh did yeah, some did of some the um, the animation work, didn't he? Yeah. On the early on stuff? Yep. Yeah. I was not involved. Nor was I. I was lazy. I... You were involved. You did some of the testing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You did testing. I guess I did very some of the, on. like, the answering questions around LLCs and domains. Yeah. Yeah, but that's but that's it. I didn't either do anything way, technical. that's I, also very helpful. I'm not <laughs> claiming anything. I did nothing. Um, I watched you play a cool game. You and Brian. Yeah, it was um, enjoyable. I got to say, his idea on that jumping mechanic, that's really fun. So for those of you who haven't seen it, um, the idea, well, it's, it's a kind of a generic sci-fi space thing where you found a station. You're investigating it. Go see what's wrong. Oh, shit. Stuff happens when you're on the other ship. Um, but dun, dun, dun. Um, dun, dun, dun. what's actually really cool about it, though, is the jumping mechanic of it is um, if you jump, you flip your you, there's no gravity. So you automatically take off in the direction that you jump. 
and then you just land on whatever surface you hit and your character automatically rotates for you to the direction that your shoes hit which makes for some really fun interesting shooting especially in the final boss scene um i was jumping like cross fucking country just doing pop shots trying to win and then i found a really easy way to cheese it um but yeah it, it was enjoyable um i had a bad tendency because i like jumping so much that i would jump across all these long ass hallways and there's these little spores that i made up my personal goal to headbutt yes. as many of them as possible Eric tanked all of the spores. <laughs> all of the spores met my head. Those those spores were designed for people like you that thought they could just jump down the hallway with no consequences. <laughs> well, I just jumped down the hallways. There was consequences, but I just jumped yeah. down the fucking hallway. <laughs> Eric was willing to meet those con- consequences with his face. There was exactly. a, a mini boss that you you kind of cheese like you found the way yeah. to do it <laughs> and it wasn't you weren't supposed to actually be able to win that way but you did because the this enemy was actually faster than your dude but you were just like oh jump 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 and you well, just kept jumping around when you turn the corners you're invincible during the turn it's kind of like the whole roll thing yeah and during that turn you turn at the same speed as the enemy and since it was such a small run by the time you catch up to you you're in the invincibility turn and then he takes a turn at the same speed as you so you get a gap between you so i use yeah. this ability to uh hit the switch and trap him at a spot that i wasn't supposed to be able to do over and over again which it's was a, great a nice a nice little i wonder if something glitched out during that or if that's repeatable because i seem to remember trying that when we were testing that stage and he would still hit you oh maybe i just glitched it because yeah it, it seemed like i was invincible during the turn I'm curious so, so Adam, let me ask you this. Uh, I just mm-hmm. listened to some people talk about uh, this on the Nintendo Power podcast. Nintendo Power is a ba- is back officially with an official Nintendo sanctioned podcast, which is actually pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd put it on your list. It's like it's less than an hour. It comes out whenever it feels like coming out. Uh, but the past two episodes have been pretty good. Um, mm-hmm. But they were saying that uh, the only giant downside that they have at working at Nintendo is not being able to see full polished games on release like their first uh you know jump into breath of, breath of the wild or mario odyssey was seeing you know this janky half-baked game um mm-hmm. with cosmonaut i mean you got to see uh Urk playing f- through the full game uh and of course you tested it before it was you know super polished uh but mm-hmm. what's that process like for you uh watching people go through a, a fully completed game compared to you who has seen everything from the skeleton and the all the bugs that you've swept into the closet uh I think the the part that bothers me the most is when I know what they're supposed to be doing next and they can't figure it out and they're <laughs> going the wrong way. I'm like, no, no, you're so close. Just just turn around. <laughs> you were there. You were right there. It was fine. Just read the thing and it'd tell you, you know, it's, but, uh, no, it's, it's interesting. It's, I think the coolest part of watching people play that is seeing them figure out the jumping mechanic and then like seeing them get comfortable with it and then start to do stuff. It, that part, I think people seem to be most interested in, and it's kind of cool when people are like, oh, okay, I get it. That's cool. Yeah, that jumping mechanic was a was a really, really good idea. That was, to me, that's what made the game was that jumping mechanic. It was and that's enjoyable. That's where the, the entire game came from that. That was the first thing. There was, uh, Brian had made initially a little mock-up, and that the only thing that the game was, was you were that dude and you could do the jump thing. Nice. Like that was the idea for the game is that we'd have this game with this mechanic. That was that was the initial idea. Hey, that's all None you of need. The story existed or the ideas for the story or anything. If you have a fun mechanic, build around it. Yeah, that's all yeah. you gotta do. So, so um, <clears throat> I'm not I'm not quite done uh, self promoting uh, just <laughs> yet. Uh, I believe you were featured uh, or Cosmonaut was featured on Rock Paper Shotgun uh, with a, yeah. a pretty glowing that recommendation. Was a- yeah, that was a hell of a surprise. Um, it was there. They do this uh, best games of the week. So like every week, a bunch of tiny indie games are released and then they pick five of them and they put it in an article and they're like, hey, these are the decent games that came out this week. And we were one of them for that week. So I was uh, excited to see that. Nice. Well, yeah. So so the last thing I want to ask, uh, and this is, this is the last little bit of self-promotion, I promise. Um <laughs> Where can I buy Cosmonaut and how much is it? You can buy it on Steam. It's seven bucks. 
Holy shit, seven whole dollars. So go out and get it, ladies and gentlemen. Cosmonaut, rated 12 out of 10 by IGN. Game of the this Year 2019. This wasn't supposed to go here. This was supposed to be just... Eric was like, oh, I played this game. Yeah, well, we have like, Tom here. Hey, went there. promotion! It went there. Don't <laughs> worry, I got gotcha. you. Uh, so I've been playing some games um, that I didn't make. Uh, I went back to Breath of the Wild. Uh, I started jumping into the DLC. It's fucking difficult. Trials of the Sword? No, no, the next one. Oh. Trials of the Sword was DLC 1, this is DLC 2. This is the Champion's Ballad. Oh. So they give you a lot more stuff, including more story content. And Hold on, hold on. More story content implies there was story content. Story content, okay. meaning, meaning okay. like single player, more, more shrines, uh, more stuff to do, more missions. For you audio guys, um, that was major air quotes around story content. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So it's not super, uh, super uh, in-depth story or anything. This is a Zelda game after all, but uh, it's fucking difficult. Uh, one of the first missions uh, sees you... Um, and this is this literally just the start of the mission. I'm not going to give you anything else after this on what you do. Uh, it gives you the ultimate weapon, which is this weird, like, uh, candle holder looking thing that glows. Um, and it can kill anything in one hit. Anything. Doesn't matter who, doesn't matter what. Anything will die in one swing. It's got... Two charges that refill over a short period of time, so it is a, a charged weapon. Oh, that. But while you're holding it, you also die in one hit. Yes. It permanently knocks your hearts down to one-fourth of a heart, where literally anything like a bat brushing up alongside you. Like, somebody accidentally bumping into you on the sidewalk when you're, you know, walking somewhere would kill you. Kind of one-hit death. Okay, I didn't know that's what that was called. Yeah, I've actually, uh, I started that one. And it's then fucking I hard. Quickly decided, you know what? I don't want to fuck with this. Uh, it's it's pretty rewarding after you get through it all. Uh, but yeah, it's it's fucking hard because you have um, like four different areas you have to go and clear out in this, which is like ah. Oh. Yeah, it's it's fucking difficult. Um, I'm really enjoying it. Uh, I did get through that part. I unlocked some more stuff to do. Uh, the game just keeps opening up and keeps being a fantastic adventure. Um, I gotta say, I I'm really happy with the DLC totally happy with it i still really don't have too much desire to go back through and play it that said that's not an indictment on the game the game was great it's just i don't have a thing like hey i want to go play more zelda it's like i did a fuck ton i put a lot of time in it and i beat it it's like oh, okay yeah um it's i i beat it i i feel like i could go through again like uh through the the final battles um I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. I'll, I'll report back after I finish up all of the DLC stuff that I'm going through right now, and I'm going to try to keep it as spoiler-free as possible. What I'm not Dark going to keep spoiler-free is me playing through Dark Souls again. Okay. That's it. Okay. I started a new game plus. Okay. No, I wanted to hear more about Dark Souls. No, so actually, I have some questions about Zelda, because <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you said about... Uh, no, but I have more wait, questions fix, about so Dark Souls. How, in what way does Zelda parallel with your experience with Dark Souls? So with this DLC and being able to <laughs> die in one hit, it really paralleled the, the need in Dark Souls to approach problems slowly, cautiously, and with a lot of forethought. Because while you're playing Zelda, usually you're like, oh, that's cool. I can tank this guy because I've got all this food. But while holding this weapon, it really becomes a true test of skill and patience as you slowly work your way through uh, all these well-placed enemy encounters. Um, which is very reminiscent of Dark Souls, where the enemies will hit hard and fast, and it really keeps you on your toes through the entire experience. Okay. You're Fuck welcome. Fuck you. Done. <laughs> I, I, I share um, the sentiment I with this. d -Laz. Nice. So, yeah. Fuck that. But what I was going to say is, honestly, with Zelda, the boss battles, the actual boss battles, <clears throat> were some of my least favorite stuff about it. The main ones. I, I enjoy the the ones out in the environment. Yeah. I think the main ones suck. I will agree with you. The the actual bosses were slogs. There was uh, very little interesting about them. Now, the, the bosses, not, not the fucking rabbit guys, but the bosses in Mario Odyssey, like the big temple guy with the fist, that was fun. It was an engaging little boss battle, and it never got repeated. But in 
Uh, in Breath of the Wild, it was, hey, here's this really hard enemy that cheaply hits you every time, and you're going to do this four times over, and it was really fucking annoying by the end. Yeah, I just the combat for those wasn't engaging there was one that was fun it was the electric one where you had to uh use your magnetic ability so i'm yeah. gonna say yeah that was the only one that was like okay other than that the best boss fights have been like finding the random stone people out in the middle of nowhere or deciding deciding you yes. want to go against the lionel those oh are the fuck fun the things. lionels jesus christ once you play that game lionel they richie they will yeah. strike you lionel terror. richie just everywhere in that game it's fucking awful but that said i think uh oh, v has got a question do i not consider uh the estus flask in dark souls to be a parallel to food in zelda um yes and no um <laughs> no nope. food, food nope. in zelda no nope. is... no nope. no nope. 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 damn it nope. moving on to the nope. news yeah i was actually gonna say adam have you been playing any rainbow lately no, no? actually oh. i've been meaning to play some more but i haven't been because um, we lucked out. Uh, it turns out that, well, what they were trying to do is uh, Ubisoft raising the price for Rainbow Six. Um, what we bought at $40 was getting bumped up to 60 which is standard game, standard unlocks. They would give you a few mm -hmm. cosmetics, and that's it. Uh, the uh, $70 version is getting bumped up to 90 which gives you the current year operators. And then they were having a hundred and twenty dollar edition that's going to give you all the operators. So essentially, two times full price. I I don't like the idea of a game getting more expensive years after release, and I don't like the idea of that price increase just being some loot boxes that you get too. Yeah, that that's the one that like bothered me. You're increasing me. the price of the entry into the game. So that you uh, have essentially bought microtransactions. Yeah, and enough people complain that one got brought back down. Luckily, yeah, but all yeah, the rest are still up. Fit over that. So I I was looking at this. In what's this complete edition for one hundred and thirty bucks is going to be the new price of it? I think it was yes. one hundred and twenty, one hundred and thirty, something like that. But yeah, but it used to be I, ninety. <clears throat> Does it, does it come with, like, a shitty plastic statue thing that, like, I would get a GameStop? <laughs> well, That's the only reason I'd buy this. Here's one thing I can't understand. So, if you bought at year one with the operators, maybe it would cost $60. Then year two with all the operators costs more because there's more operators. Now we're on year three with even more operators, which is why. <sighs> I, I understand that. I, I think it's... Uh... Because here's the thing. You I, I don't realize, need to do it. You can get these operators without doing that. Yeah, I, I totally get it. Um, I, I just think it's... Um, I'm trying to search for, for the right word. Uh, I think Ubisoft is a little high on themselves right now because Rainbow Six Siege has been you know, a game that, when it launched, um, didn't garner much praise and then uh through a bunch of love and care by the dev team has turned into this game that's got you know a healthy player base people like it uh it's fairly competitive um their their system relatively or uh, uh mostly takes care of uh hackers it's it's turned into a good game but the fact that it's a good game today doesn't mean that you can start charging you know 90 to 130 bucks for it they were charging 90 before though I and I, I don't think this does. I don't think a price hike does good things for new players coming into the game. And I, I don't think forcing them onto the starter yeah. edition does good things either, because it makes the game really annoying to play. I think the starter well, edition they, they need to outline what that is more. They are reworking the starter edition in some way. They haven't announced it yet, but they did make a post saying that they are going to be changing some ways in which the starter edition works. So hopefully that will fix some of the issues with it because very few people actually recommend anybody get the starter edition. Yeah. Because of the shitty progression system I, from I just, there if you want the other operators. I don't know. Like it, a game that keeps adding more and more content, I, I guess you could make a logical argument that it would get more and more expensive over time, but I I don't know. It just it seems like they're they're betting a lot and and i don't see this being good odds for them all this is is increasing the price and adding in some uh microtransaction stuff like they're not even well they're not even all... like deciding the game is worth more they're just like here 
you're not allowed to just buy the game outright anymore. You have to buy the game plus these 10 crates. Well, luckily they yeah. did. They took that part back for the standard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But which is really important. Because yes, because the standard <clears throat> is where most people will probably come into play. Yes. If they fucked with the standard and left it at that model, I would be 100% on board with bitching. But because you can still get into just the base game without the extra content that the other ones are paying for, it's the only reason I'm okay with it. Yeah, it, it, to me, like uh, Rockstar putting Grand Theft Auto Five and leaving it at sixty bucks, and right now it's on sale for thirty. But leaving it at sixty bucks for this long is just kind of outlandish to me. It's fucking ridiculous. Uh, and Rainbow Six Siege uh, is not Grand Theft Auto Five. It's, yeah, it's really not. But it's forty dollars too. I know, I know, and that's that's fine. But I, I'm saying that if they bumped it to sixty, you are not in that league. You are nowhere near that league. Um, leaving it at forty, okay. Fine. I would have paid. Honestly, I would have paid sixty for what I have. I enjoyed it that yeah, much. Yeah, but but would you have bought it initially if it was sixty bucks? Insanely depth of gameplay. Yes. It's not that it's not worth it. It's sixty bucks. I enjoy Clancy shooters. That's the this, thing. This this is a game that came out how long ago? How, when, Probably when did this release? Three years ago. Yeah, three years ago, I think. It's it's gonna. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, it just seems high to me. I don't really have a dog in this hunt. I don't play that game. I don't like tactical shooters. I do, and I like it. <clears throat> um, but yeah, so that was that was a fun little foray. Other fun little um, crazy moments is when ESL give cease and desist Jesus on Christ. Dota streamers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, <laughs> the the way the way tournaments work uh, is that. You can watch a tournament through a platform like Twitch, or in ESL's case, you can log on to Facebook and try to find the stream, which a bunch of players are complaining. They logged on to Facebook, tried to find the ESL streams, and they couldn't because it's Facebook is not organized well for these types of events, um, it, which ESL said they are directly working with Facebook to fix. Uh, but you can also fire up your Dota 2 game client, click on the tournament, and watch the stream right there. Um, and if you want, you have the option of watching it without the camera movements or the commentary by official ESL people. Um, then, if you want, you could add your own commentary and camera movements and broadcast the whole thing on Twitch on your personal stream. Uh, and if you did that a couple weeks ago, or, or a week ago, you would have been met with DMCA takedown notices from ESL. Um... So, so bad news, you just got hit with a DMCA notice. Worse news, ESL has no legal right to send you one. Unless you are actually using their camera movements or their casters, they own none of that content, and Valve has come out swinging. Valve has said, look, only Valve software has the legal authority to send DMCA takedown notices regarding any and all Dota 2 content. ESL, knock it the fuck off. Um, so if you want to stream any Dota 2 tournament at all, you are completely allowed. You are within your legal rights. Valve has said you are allowed to stream this 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Doesn't matter who's made, uh, who is in charge of the tournament. What you're not allowed to do is stream their casters without their approval, which totally makes sense to me. I totally get that. And I, I applaud Valve for coming out in defense of streamers, uh, and in defense of, you know, uh, fighting for their IP. I can see this getting ESL sued by Facebook because ESL possibly had a contract that they didn't have the right to give. Um, depending maybe. how, depending on the terms, because yeah, I, maybe. Facebook can't be happy about that. No, I'm sure they're pissed. I'm sure they're absolutely pissed. But that said, this is uh, game streaming, which is legally nebulous uh, area anyway. I mean, fuck, even Nintendo says, hey, if you sign up for a Nintendo streamer partner plan, you're not allowed to stream our games. And that's why people just don't sign up for the Nintendo preferred partner play and they just stream Mario Odyssey. But yeah, I thought that was that was a really, really interesting. Yeah, thing. so so ESL is becoming less and less relevant, um, thanks to this deal with Facebook, and I'm sure this is not the end of it. Probably not. I, I would honestly I would much rather see, you know, a couple random Dota 2 pros um give their casting on top of an ESL stream on Twitch because that's what they're going to do and that's what they've been doing on, on Twitch this week and ESL is fucking pissed about it. Well, 
you made a deal with the devil and now you're going to get owned get owned <laughs> also um so last week we was talking about the uh blizzard guy that got um fined and stuff well turns out <clears throat> the overwatch league is going even more on that now he's not a standalone they're actually going for all content with their game and going at anyone under contract for anywhere about this game huh so they are monitoring everything relating to overwatch now which is crazy yeah so yeah, if you want to if you report someone on Overwatch for toxic behavior, uh, and let's say you have a YouTube video of this guy, you didn't actually, uh, you know, see him in game. You saw him on a YouTube uh, channel, and you send that video off to Blizzard, they will ban the toxic person with YouTube video evidence. Uh, if you have a YouTube channel dedicated to being a prick in Overwatch matches, eh, you're probably going to get banned when people report your channel to Blizzard. I don't know how I feel about this, though. It's Blizzard trying to clean up their community, and they are going hardcore on it. Um, this is a degree of censorship I'm not sure I'm comfortable with. Well, uh, so you don't have to post YouTube videos of you calling people, uh, you know, racial slurs to YouTube. It doesn't have to be racial slurs. <laughs> but here's the thing. If you do, you did. Yeah. You so, did. so, so why, why shouldn't you be banned for that, right? Why it's, it's, should you? Because it's against the terms of use when you logged on to Overwatch and you said, I'm going to play online, and the game system said, hey, you can't use those words, and, and we're going to give you a seven-day ban, right? So and, if and, a guy then, just calls someone, hey, you're fucking trash. No, oh, that's know? totally different. That's totally different. <laughs> even, even Overwatch <laughs> says in their tips, they say, hey, look, uh, we encourage our community to be nice to each other. By the way, you can tell people they should play better. It even says that in so many words. It says, hey, if somebody says you're trash, totally fucking allowed. So when you say it's, toxicity, it's actually just don't use offensive. Don't use, don't use homophobic language. Don't use racial slurs. Uh, you know, don't tell someone that their mother was great last night. Uh, like there's, there's a list of things that they enumerate that you're not allowed to do uh, in the game. But if you say, wow, this mercy is a fucking piece of shit, that's totally allowed totally loud because i have gotten that mm. uh, plenty of times because i suck at playing mercy i was gonna say just get better yeah see exactly <laughs> my response is get i good. have to get good uh <laughs> but yeah yeah you can tell people they're trash in overwatch totally allowed trust me i would know trash knows trash what? yeah sorry what um what nothing 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 um some other little quick hitters uh anthem everyone was kind of expecting it i think i'm the only one sad by it uh i got pushed back to 2019 this is possibly the last run for BioWare. This is mm -hmm. BioWare Studios is getting everything thrown on this. So, yeah, so when I it was so. the initial release planned? They said 2018, but okay. there was never anything. There's there's no fucking there. way. There's no fucking way. So it got pushed right. and I I'll, mean, I'll say the same thing I say every time something like this happens. I'd rather them wait and release it when it's done than to rush it out. The last Bioware agree. release that got rushed um, was possibly, well, it was the death of the Mass Effect franchise. Yeah, yeah. Mass it, Effect Andromeda was rushed and... With the birth of some wonderful animated GIFs. Yes, yes it was. Yes, love those. Um, for those in audio with that awkward silence, Tom and myself are T-posing because fuck, your animators are trash. Get that better. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. You just said that assuming that Bioware has animators. Well, true. From that, you have to assume they don't. Yeah. And they just have models. Yeah. But anyway, um, they're, they're writing on this. And EA is not afraid of shutting down a studio that is no longer producing. Yep. So, Bioware, you're on notice, buddy. Buddies, pals, peoples, <laughs> studio. Speaking of things shutting down, uh, Epic Mega Games has announced that they will shut down their MOBA Paragon in April. Um, now, with this, they're doing something kind of cool that we should talk about. If you have spent any money whatsoever on microtransactions... They're going to give you your money back. And this is going to be epic directly refunding you. Let's say uh, you bought something on Steam or you bought something through a third party or on Xbox. They're not going to make you go through and get, you know, Microsoft credit or Steam credit for this stuff. They're going to say, hey, we're going to cut you a fucking check because we're shutting down the game that you 
put a bunch of money into. So is it Damn. shut down yet? Uh, it, no, it will shut down. Uh, so what I'm hearing, if you want April to, April ex- 26. If you want to experience everything that that game was, go there right now. No, buy do everything they have. I do not and know. Try it out. <laughs> I do. Not, I need to stress this. I do not know if this is retroactive. If you spend money today, I cannot guarantee you'll get it back. Don't tell people to do that. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> that said, uh, uh, yeah. yes. Let's see. Because um, yeah, trying to find way, their I'm, actual quote on the refund, but they are giving uh, everyone who spent money on the game. Um, their money back this is this that is, is great. really cool yeah well they've made that's so really much cool. money on a game that's free that people are buying early well, I mean, so i mean they have the extra cash right now everybody talks like you know fortnite like epic was completely unknown before fortnite epic mega games has been a thing in pc gaming forever right they made fucking unreal they make the unreal engine they say, are they're drowning the in money well my big <laughs> thing is they're paying People are buying. They a have game a that's literal Scrooge McDuck vault in Epic Mega Games headquarters, <laughs> just they, for licensing. Just for licensing the Unreal Engine. Quote me on that. Fuck yeah. True on story. It. That would be awesome. Dive through some gold coins, get a concussion, die in the bottom of it because Scrooge McDuck isn't real. Yeah, it sounds like a great time. I'm good with it. Love that game. Yeah. By the way, fucking love that game. Ducktales, so good. The remaster. Did you guys ever play that remaster? Dude, the remaster was so good. I didn't know I that they could make the moon music better. Oh, Either so of them. Good. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> I knew that would make you mad. You, well, you gotta, I can understand you not playing the original. I mean, you're a little younger than us, meaning that you actually kind of missed it potentially. Two on the years. NES. DuckTales was the only you're, babysitter I knew. You were born in '90. I was playing Nintendo in '90. What year were you born, Eric? '87. That's not that big of a difference. It was enough for you not to play the game. Maybe I just maybe, didn't want to play the game. Maybe he was a Genesis kid. We never even considered that. I was a Genesis kid too, but I had both. Yeah, I had I had both, and then no SNES. I did the same thing. Yeah, I did Genesis instead of SNES. Then I went to the N sixty four, and the rest is history. Yeah, I didn't have a PlayStation until I was already a man. <laughs> so you still don't have one? Mm, no. Okay, no. that's what I thought. Um, Destiny 2, um, they're changing that shader system. Uh, the shaders are the uh, things that allow you to color the armor and stuff, I think. Yeah. There was a big uh, fuss because they were one-time use when they used to not be in Destiny 1. And yeah, now they're reworking it because enough people bitched. Yeah, I... You know, since I've given up on Destiny, uh, I've given up on Warframe. Like, I get the whole lifestyle grinding game things. I get how that appeals to some people. But it just... It lost me. Every time I would get a little bit farther in Destiny or Warframe, I'd be like, oh, cool, look, I got this new stuff. Uh, now there's better stuff around the corner. Okay. And it's just this this constant marching forward evermore. Uh, I think I'm done with grinding games. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just don't think they're for me. Um, I like growing numbers. So so we... we talked about the genesis we didn't even didn't even hit this genesis legend yugi naka creator of sonic the hedgehog has announced he is joining square enix whoop de fucking do i don't like yuji naka i'm gonna say it right here i don't like the guy i think sonic team has made a mockery of what was a great awesome sonic franchise we saw sonic uh mania you know hit you know, the tops of the charts for being this amazing Sonic game, the best we've had in decades. And then fucking Sonic Forces comes out, thanks to Sonic Team, and it's just a, a standard piece of trash. Um, he made a game in the early 90s to compete with Mario to sell the Genesis, and that's all he's done. <laughs> it worked, though. It worked. It worked really, really well. Congratulations. And those games are that still was, fun. Yeah, but... Sonic Mania was a great game. Okay. I built a really, really nice chair... <clears throat> In 1994. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're not going to get hired by Ikea to make furniture now because they expect you to be up with the times. I don't know. If, if, that, if that chair fucking upset a, an industry giant, it might, right? Because yeah, but before, if that chair only sold for three years and then after that, that chair progressively evolved to one of the shittiest chairs in the market. Okay, so, so that chair that he built took 90% of the market share Right, Nintendo was at 90% market share for the NES, and they made it an even playing field. They knocked Nintendo down to 50. It became a two-person race from a one-person race, Well, thanks have, to this guy. You have 
to remember the landscape at that time, though. I mean, it was a one-person rate. Well, it was, but it wasn't. But there was all the other small shit. All it was is, hey, we have a competent system. That's all it took. They didn't even have to have Sega or Sonic. <laughs> all they had to have was a competent fucking system, and they I, were going to get share. Dude, dude. It was 16-bit Ma- versus 8. They were going to take it. No, Magnavox had a competent system. Atari had a competent system. The thing that, that Sega competed on was really good marketing and catering to an edgy alternative audience, which they did really well. It's really sad to look back and see that today all it took was, you know, a blue hedgehog that likes chili dogs with an attitude to upset, you know, the king that is Mario. But that's what it took. It also just took 16-bit graphics. I don't, eh. I, I, I think, mean, the, I think you're honestly, it. the SNES, if it would have came out before the Sega, or I should say it this way. I don't if, think so. If, if it had that you, footing and no, then the Sega there's, came out. There's, there's only, there's one, one little phrase that will upset all of your argument right now. Sega does what Nintendo don't. <laughs> yeah, they um, they blow their wad on nine nine ninety nine, and then they're done. Don't remind me. I'm still sad. For those of you who don't know, that's Dreamcast release. Um, but yeah, mm. I don't care about the Sonic guy. I think. But do you care about uh, Moppin, the creator of Downwell? No. Oh, because he just joined Nintendo. No, but Downwell was really cool. Yeah. yeah I like I that mean, game. Honestly, unless your game does something <clears throat> super novel in modern era, I don't care if you're going somewhere else. Because there's so much... Like, Downwell, yeah, it was a cool game. It was. But but you gotta you gotta give it to this the the most understated you know awesome I got a job tweet I got a job at Nintendo I'll do my best and that was it that was his press release. <laughs> Why does he need a press release? Because he's he's a successful indie game guy. You have to have press releases. Uh, fuck it, I don't. How else are you gonna release the presses? Yeah. If I never heard his name, uh, okay, I couldn't have pointed him out. I could have. You just hate indie devs. That's what I'm hearing. No. Yeah. I like McMullen. McMillan. You didn't, didn't even say, say his name. name. Right. Ed. <laughs> I like Ed. <laughs> Do you like Phil? No. Good, because I don't either. He's a fucking asshole. I like Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Anyway, um, I think there was just a little bit more of oh, the um, Super Zelda 64. Um, Tom, I'll let you go on this because you probably lost your they, shit from they this. Took, they took, well, no, not really. They took Zelda 64 and they put Mario in it and then restructured some of the puzzles and it's really cool and you should download it now because next week Nintendo's totally suing this guy. Um, <laughs> Valve appeals a $2.4 million fine that the Australian government gave them you know, way back in 2014 or some shit. Uh, that's still a thing. They just need to pay it because they make that much in a half of a day. Uh, Mitomo is shutting down. Nintendo said, yep, it was a good run. It's over now. Thanks. Um, that was their first ever mobile app. Court rules illegal bot makers that spam Twitch chat must pay $1.3 million to Twitch for damages. That's interesting because they're claiming that the fact that they were spamming the chat, that it was actually cutting out a professional streamer's livelihood. Yeah, I, I get it. I totally, I, I could see the legal argument. Uh, and Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, as we've said before, is testing a new anti cheat system. And that's all the news we have. Not testing, it's live now. All of it. Oh shit, it's alive now? Holy Ooh, shit. It lives. And uh, anyway, I think this is where, this is where we cut the next week's postcast game, right? Oh, yeah. So. Um, yeah. That's a yeah, good call. Uh, Tom, do you I, have the results for this I, week's postcast? I do. Uh, winning with eight votes out of 15 is Grand Theft Auto 5. So join us next week for some crazy revelry where we destroy people and we all bunch up and try to kill RS Gamer. Um, so early next week, we will have a new <laughs> poll up for you guys. Tonight, however, is Don't Starve Together. Uh, we have fucked with some settings and our server size is going to be able to be as many people as want to fucking play with us. Actually, 64 yeah. is the max, so as long as we don't get 64 players, we're fine. There's like three people who watch this show. But that's yeah, but what if they all have... That's us. What if they bring their friends? Oh. Yes, bring your friends. Yes. But anyway, uh, that's tonight right after this, so uh, come check it out. Um, also, go check out our YouTube. Uh, we have some stuff there, but if you watch us every week, there's probably not a whole reason to. But still check it out, because we say to. If you're over there... Yeah. 
come to our Twitch uh, TV slash 72 pin connector every Saturday night at nine o'clock Eastern standard time to come be part of yeah. this chat and have fun with us. Um, get your RSS feeds from the website, 72 pin connector.com or just get them yeah. off any of the distributors. Yeah. Adam, was there any yeah. news this week, sir? Yeah. What Panda pool five, five, six, eight. Thank you for following. Oh, shit. Panda pool. Thank you. Actually, I hope it's not a pool of blood because those things are endangered. Don't fuck with those. Yeah. That's it's my, not, uh, not nice, yeah. man. But if it's a pool of pandas and they're it's, fluffy. If it's, if it's a pool for pandas, pool. like they have like their own Olympic swimming pool with like a nice gym, shower facilities on site. I think it's just a group of pandas that play pool. That would that be, would okay be cool. too. Yeah. I can get behind that. Like they all just kind of like smoke cigars and just like in a bar dimly lit. They probably shouldn't Some smoke cigars. Yeah. They're endangered. Not true, but they don't yeah. care. They're about to die anyway, so they just want to go out having a good time. They're bamboo yeah. cigars. Yeah, right. there yeah, we see, go. That's, that's fine. You. Yeah. <laughs> well, enough of that, Shannon. So anyway, yes. jump on, don't starve. And until next week, game on. See you, everybody. Bye. We'll talk about Dark Souls next week. No. Oh.